Hello to everyone that's out there listening. We'd like to welcome you to the First Methodist Church Hip Hop Service Virtual Worship Experience, the Easter edition, man. We are here to celebrate the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. We are celebrating not only the fact that he died for our sins, but that on the third day, he got up, he rose, he was resurrected with all power in his hands to give us victory over sin, over death, over anything that we happen to face in this world and man this week we are looking to celebrate that with this virtual worship experience we'd like to thank you for joining us thank you if this is your first time back we pray that you would consider subscribing if you, this is your first time ever hearing this we pray that it will bless your heart and your soul in a way that encourage you and give you peace for the struggles that we're dealing with as a world today will give you strength to endure and to keep moving on and to give you hope that through Jesus Christ, all things will work together for good to them that love him and are called according to his purpose, man. So, man, we're going to open up in a, in a word of prayer and ask God to have his way during this time. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus for your spirit. We thank you, Father God, that, Lord, you have the power to move over the internet, to touch hearts, to touch minds, to touch souls, to give peace where there is none, to give hope where there's only been despair spare to give strength where we have felt weak at God Lord you are that source Lord Jesus we thank you Lord God not only for dying for our sins but for rising with all power in your hand father we pray that you would bless this virtual worship experience move through every song that we sing unto you God move through every prayer that is prayed and through the word that is preached all of this service have your way God in Jesus name amen Amen and amen. Man, at this time, we're going to begin to move into the worship part of this virtual worship experience. And in that part, what we're simply doing is just singing songs to God, singing songs that are opening up our heart to his spirit and to him moving in our lives. It helps us remove any type of distractions that will prevent us from having an encounter and experience with God during this virtual worship experience. It is so much going on in our world right now uh, with everything that is that is going on, not only in the U.S., but uh, globally. And also there are things that are going on in our day-to-day -day life that make it hard for us to focus on what God is trying to say to us, what God is trying to do inside of us, and then ultimately what God wants to do through us, right? And so, man, we take this time to sing praises to God and to focus our heart, our mind, our spirit, and all of our attention on Him as we sing to Him and let His Spirit have His way and move wherever we are, whether we're in our homes or whether you might be listening to this on whatever device you're listening to it on. Sing and meditate and think about what God is trying to say to you in these moments. Thank you for joining us and please join us as we sing to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
continue singing songs to God, man, as the worship uh, songs continue uh, as we move forward, that you would just uh, continue to just vibe out, man, uh, whether you singing or not, or whether you just closing your eyes, get to that place in that space with God, man, just let the spirit of the Lord truly have his way doing this virtual worship experience. Yeah, First Corinthians 15, starting at verse 3. The first thing I did was place before you what was placed so emphatically before me, that the Messiah died for our sins, exactly as Scripture tells you, that he was buried, that he was raised from the death on the third day, again, exactly as Scripture says, that he presented himself alive to Peter, then to his closest followers, and later to more than 500 of his followers, all at the same time. That he then spent time with James and the rest he had commissioned to represent him. And that he finally presented himself alive to me. He resurrected. He died on the cross for our sins, to cleanse all the guilt from within. He paid the price, but he's alive. He resurrected. He died on the cross for our sins, to cleanse all the guilt from within. He paid the price, but he's alive. He's resurrected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was falsely accused, beaten, broken, and bruised. Gave his life for a wretch like me. When I think of all I done, disrespected his son, I slay the sin, but I thought I was free. Dark cloud over me, can't see. Locked up, and only Christ had the key. Had to hit a rock bottom, and before I finally call him Lord Jesus, here I am, save me. He died on the cross for our sins, to cleanse all the guilt from within. He paid the price, but he's alive, he resurrected. He died on the cross for our sins, to cleanse all the guilt from within. He paid the price, but he's alive, he's resurrected. My bro started tripping on me cause they see what the Lord did in me Now when a beautiful queen passed me on the streets No one feeling like a dog get eat Cause the Lord came through, made all things new Life change came through, what the living God do Confessing and repenting, dying daily so my spirit man living Not a dead man walking on me, I'm a living with this life Because Jesus Christ resurrected rose on the third day Ascended up to heaven, sent the Holy Spirit down to those that's been saved by grace. Through faith we pray. We study, we obey the word of God and meditate hard on his truth each day. We try to win this race and help others do the same right He died on the cross for our sins, to cleanse all the guilt from within. He paid the price, but he's alive, he's resurrected. He died on the cross for our sins. To cleanse all the guilt from within He paid the price, but he's alive He's resurrected First Peter, First Peter. What, a God we have. what a God we have And how fortunate we are to have him This father of our master Jesus Because Jesus was raised from the dead We've been given a brand new life And have everything to live for Including a future in him And the future starts now God is keeping careful watch over us And the future He died on the cross for our sins To cleanse all the guilt from within He paid the price But he's alive He's resurrected yeah. and Father God we, uh, we come to you right now Lord in the name of Jesus Thanking you for this opportunity to step away from everything and to just be in your presence. God, we ask that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would bless the message that comes forth, God. The message that comes from your holy scriptures that will be preached in these moments, God. Help our hearts to be uh, good soil, good ground, so that when the seed of the word come forth, God, that we will receive it and that it will grow inside of us and help us to become everything that you have created us to be, God. Father, we uh, pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, uh, man, 
that you would transform us by your truth that your word would do what you promised that it would do you said that when your word go forth it will not return void that it will accomplish whatever you send it forth to do so lord we thank you that your word that is preached in these moments will accomplish everything that you are sending it forth to do in each and every last one of our lives so that when it's all said and done god that we won't ever be the same god that we will be greater that we will be stronger that we'll be more at peace that we'll be more hopeful that we'll be more faithful god for you lord in jesus name amen Man, that was jamming, man. We hope that you were encouraged and are being encouraged. We've been praying for you. So glad that you're tuned in with us right now. Happy Easter to everyone. And uh, we're praying that you have a, a safe and uh, blessed Easter and uh, that God would, uh, his peace will be with you, that, that you will be blessed during Easter, regardless of what's going on. You know, so as we talk about Easter, why is Easter such a big deal? Well, it's such a big deal because... Easter proves, as Christians, we believe that Easter proves that Jesus was who he proclaimed to be. And it shows how much God loves us, right, with our unlovable selves, right? The fact is, as Christians, we believe that the resurrection took place. As Christians, we believe that Jesus was who he claimed to be to be he claimed to be God he said I am God I'll show up on earth in human form and I'm gonna prove it by dying and resurrecting coming back to life in three days and he says not only am I gonna do that but I'm going to display this before the city of Jerusalem which at the time had about a million people. That's a lot of eyewitnesses. So there are two very important biblical truths that we learn from Easter. I want to go over that. And if you understand these truths, if you embrace them and apply them in your life, the stress level in your life will go down dramatically. Your worry and your frustration level will decrease dramatically. Your ability to handle the problems and the difficulties that are in your life right now and in those times to come will increase dramatically by the way that you handle them. What are those truths? Let's look at these truths, all right? These biblical truths. Two things. Easter proves, one, that God is in control, and two, that God always keeps his promises. So why is Easter a big deal? Well, Easter proves that God is in control. Our God is in control. Consider what it says in Proverbs 16.1. It says, we make our plans, but God has the last word. See, what happened in Jesus' case was that there were religious leaders at the time. And these religious leaders said, let's put a hit on Jesus. Let's, let's get rid of Jesus, right? He's a big bother. We can, uh, we can silence him by simply killing him, right? So they put a hit on Jesus, right? They set him up like the feds. They figured we're going to kill him. That's going to be the end of it. Simple. Simple. Just get it done. We're going to put a hit on him. We're going to set him up and, and get him killed. They didn't realize that that was fitting into God's plan. Jesus Christ said, I came to the earth to die on the cross for the sins of people. And then I'm going to raise back in three days. So while these religious folks of the day, the ones that were plotting against him, 
they thought that, you know, they had plans, right? Really, their plans were in God's control. You understand? He said, it will fit into exactly what I have planned to do. Proverbs 16, 1 reads like this. Check this out. It says, we make our plans. I'm going to read it again. But God has the last word. Make all the plans we want to, but God has the last say so. Right? You ever heard that when someone says, man, my God has the last word? Well, he does. As Christians, we believe God is the author and finisher of our faith. And he has the last say so at the end of the day. Okay. Here's a fact. The moment that you realize that most of your life is beyond your control, that's when you have arrived at emotional maturity in your life. Most of your life actually is beyond your control. All of the major things that have ever happened in your life, you had no control over it. You didn't choose when you were born. You didn't choose where you were born. You didn't choose your parents and who they would be. You didn't choose the natural talents and the abilities that God will give you with. All these things were beyond your control. But what you can't control is your reactions to the major things that happened in your life. These major things that happen in your life, you can't control, but how you react to them, you can control. Here's some good news, right? You ready for this? God says in the Bible that he wants to help you. He says right here in the Bible that he wants to help you. He wants to help you manage the things that are unmanageable in your life. If you trust him, he will help you control and deal with the issues that are out of control in your life right this minute. He will give you his power, the same power that he demonstrated when he raised himself from, from the dead 2,000 years ago. We call that resurrection power. God says he wants to help you, all of you. He wants to help you with that power. He says, I'll give you the power in your life to handle the things that you can't seem to manage at this time. In fact, let's go to the scripture, Ephesians 1.20. God's great power is available to help us who believe in him. It is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. Man, is that throw to what? Man, that's throw right there. That's beautiful. God will give you the power, the same power that resurrected him from the dead. Resurrecting power. How do you know when you are really trusting God? to help you with a problem how do you know when you're really believing in christ so that he can help you here's, here's when you know watch this when you stop worrying listen to me when you stop worrying and start trusting in God watch this when you stop worrying or let's say when you worry it is a red light beeping for you right it's a red light beeping for you for you warning you that you are trying to be God you're trying to be God man that's a warning light every time I try to be God and I try to figure out everything on my own I start worrying and so do you and just the other day I started getting some chest pains and all kind of different stuff and I started tripping and real quick 
I went from tripping to trusting. I was tripping for a minute. Then I started trusting. Started trusting in God. And God made a difference and I was able to sleep like a baby. And I was able to walk in confidence, not in fear. It also woke me up, though, to some realities that I need to consider about eating and things like that. Don't get me wrong. I I started thinking about those things, but I didn't let fear over overcome me. I stepped into the faith that God has given me and blessed me with. So hold on. When I start trusting God, listen. When I start trusting God. I stop having to try so hard. When I start praying, I stop panicking. You ready? When I start praying, I stop panicking. Praying is talking to God. Did you know that? You don't have to say any super fancy words. And you ever heard somebody pray and, man, you kind of want to give them a standing ovation and just stand up and start clapping. Like, man, that was crazy, dude. Knocked it out the park. That sounded so, you know, heavenly. No, praying is talking to God. Those those are great. But listen, don't get it twisted if you don't pray because you feel like you don't have the right words to say it or know how to pray. Praying is talking to God. Talk to God. Okay? And when you talk to God, listen, when I start praying, I stop panicking. When I start worshiping God, I, when I start worshiping God, I stop worrying. Worship simply put, is to honor God. To worship God is to honor God. When we sing out to God, that's a form of worship. Man, I'm going to break out in, into worship. I'm going to sing out to my God. Matter of fact, I'm going to, I can be looking at all these other things right now, but I'm going to look at this service online right now. I'm going to honor God. I'm going to make this choice to honor God. Instead of worrying, I'm going to talk to God. I'm going to start making choices that honor my God, right? That's what worship is. So when you start worshiping, you stop worrying. When you worry, you stop worshiping. It's the opposite. You see that? So when you when you start panicking, it's because you have stopped talking to God. When you start, when you start worrying and you're consumed by worry, it's because you haven't been focused on worshiping God. In the middle of the storm that you're go, going through, honor God. Get close to God. Focus on God. Pray to God. In other words, you talk to God. Focus on him and watch and see what happens. God will get you through it. You understand? When you do these things, what we're saying is God will get you through. Don't misunderstand this. When you do these things, this is not that God will get you out of it. No, God will get you through it. You won't stay buried there. He'll get you through it. Don't be listening to that Candyland, Cracker Jack box, Christianity. No, 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 no. We go through stuff. You hear what I just said? We go through stuff. We don't get buried in it. God helps us get through, right? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, death, I shall not fear. Why? Because you are with me. As I walk through the valley. Right? Psalms 23. Isaiah 41 10 reads like this Don't worry because I am with you. Don't be afraid, it says. Check this out. I will make you strong and I will help you. I will support you. Listen, I'm going to read this again. This is straight from God to you. Listen to me, whoever you are. Whoever you are, listen, listen. All of you, check this out. Listen. Don't worry are you listening this is you don't worry why not because of your last name not because of the job you have or you don't have not because of the food you have or you don't have the money you have or you don't no no listen don't worry because i am with you this is god speaking through his word to us listen don't be afraid Listen, it says, I will make you strong and will help you. I will support you. You need to be supported because you're falling and you're weary. And God says, I will support you. I will be your support system. Lean on me. 
connect with God. God says, I am with you. With tears coming out your eyes, I am with you. With your stomach growling, I am with you. With no food in the refrigerator, God says, I am with you. With health problems, health problems, I am with you. With all the bad news around her, God says, don't be afraid. I am with you. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. So why is Easter a big deal? Because Easter proves that God always keeps his promises. Easter proves that he keeps his promises. How do we know that? As Christians, we understand that long before Jesus Christ came to earth, died on a cross, rose again, went back to heaven, God promised he was going to do it. For thousands of years back into the Old Testament, God said, someday I'm going to come to the earth and I'll be called the Messiah. I'll come in human form. I'll show up on the scene in human form. And I'm going to do several things. He says, one, I'm going to show you how to live. Two, I'm going to forgive all of your sins. Three, he says, I'm going to show you the way to heaven. And I'm going to tell you that there is purpose for your life. You see, God made all these promises. And when Jesus came down, he made a bunch of promises. And mo the most famous promise of them all is that I'm going to let people kill me. And three days later, I'm going to raise myself up from the dead. Walk around Jerusalem so everybody can see me again. And this will prove that I am who I claim to be. God always makes good on his promises, y'all. You know that, look what it says in Numbers 23, 19. It says, God isn't like people. He doesn't change his mind. When he says something, he does it. When he makes a promise, he keeps it. I understand that's hard for you to believe and understand because you're human like me and you and I. We have people that break their promises always. The kids, your, your parents, you know, all kind of different people, right? servicemen and women whatever the case may be all kind of we we experience broken promises that man that woman broken promises but god keeps his promises listen there are over seven thousand promises in the bible for me and for you promises from god they're like gift certificates right waiting for you to cash them in over and over again, the Bible says, God says, if you will do this, then I will do that. Right? And then he talks about if you do that, this is going to happen. If you do this, this is going to happen. So he talks about consequences and benefits of doing what he says or, or not. God says, if you trust me in this, I will do miracles in the areas of your life that you may feel hopeless about. If you trust, if you surrender and give it to God. First Peter uh, 1, 4 through 5, it says, God has reserved for his children the priceless gift of eternal life. It is kept in heaven for you. And God will make sure that you will get there safely to receive it because you're trusting in him. Amen. Jesus says this, another uh, last scripture here for you and I. Uh, Matthew 11, 28 through 29. Listen, this is, this is God's word for you here today. Check it out. This is the red letters Jesus is speaking right here. And he says, are you tired? Worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me for real rest and you'll recover your life and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Are you are you tired? Are you worn out today? Are you burnt out? 
He says, come to me. I got you. I'll give you rest. You want to live with freedom? Come to, come to me. That's what God is telling you today. Show up. Embrace what God has in store for you today. Let us pray. Father God, I just thank you for the resurrecting power that you make available for us, Father God, to help us in our situations and our circumstances. Lord, we thank you that you give us peace that surpasses all understanding, Father God. You bring healing to the wounded, to those that are hurt, hope to the hopeless, Lord God. We, we thank you, Lord God, that you are with us, us and our families and the things that we can't control. We simply go to you with, Lord, and we ask that you be with us, that your angels will encamp around us, protecting us from harm's way. Help us with our fears, our frustrations, our disappointments. Help us in this time that we're in. Lord, we need you more than ever. We need you so much, God. Lord, we ask that you, your presence will just dwell among us like never before. That we will sense you like never before. Help us to use disciplines to make the right choices to surround ourselves with the things that are of you. We love you, Lord. We need you. And we lift up our families, Father God. We ask that you be with us during this whole time of what we're going through as a city, as a state, as a nation, and as a world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.